New York City so bad, even the illegals don't want to stay here. Coming to paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, Godbreaker, a man who rules the world, takes on the Asgardian God of Thunder in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. Pre-order your copy of John Haynes, Godbreaker at online booksellers today. Earlier this month, it was reported that some migrants have decided to leave New York City to get on buses to go to Canada. Now, many in this group of migrants are saying that the quality of life here in New York City is so bad that they actually want to leave New York City and get on a bus to go to Canada. And the Adams administration here in New York has been helping those migrants get on buses to go to Canada to go live that higher quality of life some allege they will be able to live inside of Canada. Now, this statement by the migrants is a condemning one on the state of New York City, and it really is one that should embarrass all of those blue politicians who went out here and made the statement saying that New York City would be a great place for migrants and they would be able to take care of them. Now, when I take a critical examination of many of these migrants' decision to leave New York City for Canada, it basically shows how some of these individuals are entitled and many of them believe that they should be able to live this so-called high quality of life that they aspire to have here in the city. Because many of these individuals, when they came to New York City, they believed that they were going to go out here and live an American dream that they possibly saw in 1990s TV shows like Sex and the City, Seinfeld, and Friends. And they thought that if they came to New York City, it would be that place that it was in the golden age of the 1990s during the Rudy Giuliani administration. Unfortunately, as those migrants got off the buses that they were put on by Governor Greg Abbott and driven all the way here from Texas, many of them got their um, delusions popped as related to the state of New York City. Clearly, many of the migrants were not really able to read the internet or be able to check out what New York City was like under the nine years of Bill de Blasio and Eric Adams, where the quality of life here in New York City has fallen precipitously due to dysfunctional policies supported by Bill de Blasio, such as the support of things like bail reform and the new prosecutor, um, uh, what's his, Alvin Bragg, going out and saying that he won't be prosecuting anyone for crimes. So with these new blue politicians in place, the quality of life here in New York City has fallen precipitously and many migrants were in for a rude awakening as they entered a New York City that was dirty, a New York City where there was lots of crime, a New York City where there was lots of homelessness, and a New York City filled with lots of high prices due to inflation established due to the dysfunctional Biden administration policies. And with the migrants dealing with a rude awakening that the quality of life in New York wasn't the ideal that was presented in 30-year-old shows like Friends and Seinfeld and 25-year-old shows like Sex and the City, this has led to many migrants really looking at the state of the city and realizing they don't want to be here. Now, I believe that some of these migrants are racist, just like the ones I saw in a Paul Joseph Watson video. And as they saw many black faces around them in places like the uh, Red Hook shelter, what many of these individuals wanted to do was leave the city because they oftentimes associate success with white 
And when they see a black mayor, they see a black district attorney, and they see the state of the city being in shambles, I believe many of these migrants were expressing their racist views as to, way to how they perceived the leadership of Eric Adams and Alvin Bragg and Jamani Williams. They looked at the three black males running the city and seeing the poor state of the city and also seeing the crime perpetrated by what they believe to be people of color and seeing most of the homeless being black males. I believe that when they saw all of these conditions as related to the poor quality of life and the incompetent leadership in place, this is what many led to many of these migrants wanting to go out and leave New York City to go to Canada. Because when I was watching the Paul Joseph Watson video, there were similar situations with some migrants who went to a predominantly minority area of an English city. And when they started to see many of these areas filled with Africans and Indians, they did not want to live in those areas and they decided they wanted to move to predominantly white areas. And this could also be the motivation for some of those migrants for wanting to go to Canada. Now, they would possibly believe that if they go to Canada, they believe that Canada is predominantly white. And because Canada is predominantly white, they believe that there's going to be a higher quality of life than in New York City, where there are is a lot of drugs, there's a lot of homelessness, a lot of crime. This is what leads to many of the migrants believing if they go to Canada, they will be able to live a better quality of life because they correlate a better quality of life with white. And they thought, oh, they should be able to go to Canada because Canada has a very what they call robust system of welfare. And that robust system of welfare has lots of benefits, not to mention there being a alleged work shortage. So there's a lot of motivation for individuals to want to go to Canada. And this is why possibly some of these individuals want to go to Canada over New York City. But it's extremely embarrassing because what the migrants are basically saying with their actions is that the quality of life in New York City has fallen so precipitously that they consider it to be far below the standard of many of the third world countries that they come from. Now, I remember being in New York City in the 90s and this being a place where everybody wanted to come but what we're hearing from the migrants is that the quality of life in New York City has fallen so precipitously that the standards and living conditions are far below the standards of the third world. And what's really sad is that you have individuals like Eric Adams and Alvin Bragg and Jumani Williams who are just completely clueless to how they've been insulted. And they're completely clueless because what these migrants are saying is a testimony to how far worse the quality of life has become under blue party leadership. Because as a lifelong New Yorker who has been living here for 49 going on 50 years, I have not seen New York City in such a bad shape since the days when I was a little boy in the late 1970s to the time when I was a teenager in the early 1990s. I mean, I basically grew up in the hellhole era of New York City, run under Blue Party Mayor Ed Koch and David Dinkins, and New York City basically is reflecting that same era of chaos that was the late 1970s and 1980s as the city was run into the ground by completely inept leaders inept leaders who were out here bragging that New York City was a sanctuary city, but it looks like many of those who are migrants don't even consider this city to be a sanctuary to them because they see that the quality of life is just as bad as their previous situation 
and that should be a condemning statement on the inept leadership of Bill de Blasio and Eric Adams, not to mention the incompetence of Andrew Cuomo and Kathy Hochul, as they have run New York City and New York State straight into the ground with their incompetent leadership, because we are now at the point where we have migrants, people who are not even citizens of this country, wanting to think that they would consider this a place where they want to have asylum, and they don't want to have asylum here because they don't feel safe here because the conditions here mirror those of their own countries, and that's something that should be telling to many of these politicians, but guys like Eric Adams just do not know how to lead because he's too busy chasing behind Joe Biden like Mr. Whittendale on the old TV show, The Jeffersons, and Eric Adams, like George Jefferson, is too busy clout chasing to set a direction for New York City. He's too busy clout chasing other more prominent white people looking for their validation and their approval to look to lead and set a course for New York City because once his mouth wrote that check with the migrants saying that he would make New York City a sanctuary city, he soon found that his ass couldn't cash the check and since his ass couldn't cash the check, we're finding that many of the migrants who he promised a better life are finding that the quality of life is just as terrible as it is for most resident New Yorkers like myself who have been living here for years and watch as a once great city falls right back into an abyss again due to incompetent blue party leadership and they can't see how this is embarrassing because when you have people who have absolutely nothing saying that they can do better than what was considered to be one of the greatest cities in the world, that's an embarrassing testament to how far New York City has fallen. It's a testament to how inept the leadership is and it's a testament to how people here are just completely clueless because you're sitting here thinking, oh, they are just leaving and we should just support them in leaving. No, you need to understand that they're leaving for many of the reasons those who can rub two nickels together want to leave New York City. They want to leave because the quality of life is hot garbage. They want to leave because drugs are running rampant like they did in the late 1980s when the crack epidemic basically made New York City into a war zone. They're leaving because the tax rate is just extremely high. And they're also leaving because the quality of life here is horrible with sky high prices, sky high rents, sky high property taxes, and it's just not worth the time. And that's why those individuals are going to Canada. And as they go to Canada, they are re looking for that better life, a better life than they believe can be provided to them in New York City. And what's happening with these migrants, again, should be a testimony to the failures of the Blue Party. Now, some of these migrants, after going to Canada, they are coming back and they are saying, oh, we don't want to go through the long bureaucratic process. And that really shows me how some of these individuals, they really don't really want any responsibility at all because you said you wanted asylum, you said you wanted a better life, but when it comes to getting that better life, they don't want to put the work in getting that better life. No, what they're looking for are a lot of freebies and a comfortable life because as these migrants move to places like Canada, what they're looking to benefit from are their robust series of benefits and they're looking for lots of freebies and it really shows that many of these ref of these so-called um, asylum seekers are spoiled, but it also is a major testament to how bad life in New York City has become. Because when I look at this, again, decision to leave New York City, 
again, it really makes a lot of these, um, makes a real statement about how bad the city is, and it makes a statement because when you have people who have nothing saying they want to go someplace else, then that says people in New York City need to get their shit together as related to these politicians, need to get their shit together as related to the state of their city, and need to get their shit together because it's clear you're not being led by those who follow and look for clout. Now, if you want to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash app by clicking the links in the description box. And if you want to pick up some of my positive fiction on the SJS Direct Imprint and some of my Men's Issues books on the SJS Direct Imprint, you can find all those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them on Smashwords, the iBook Store, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, The Temptation of John Haynes. Given to temptation, pick up this action-packed African-American paranormal romance. Get The Temptation of John Haynes in paperback and e-readers today.